Well, cadets, go ahead and get comfortable. Maybe grab a beverage. We're going to be here a little while because this is Patrol Bases. Welcome back, cadets. I'm Master Sergeant Andrews. Today we're going to talk about patrol bases. Now, last time when we were here, we talked about halts. We talked about our three basic halts, the short, the long, and the security halt. Today we'll talk about what happens after that process in the patrol. What might we do if we need to stay for a longer period of time? The answer is that we'll use a patrol base. A patrol base is a security perimeter that is set up when a squad or platoon conducting a patrol halts for an extended period. Patrol bases should not be occupied for more than a 24-hour period, except in emergencies. A patrol never uses the same patrol base twice. There are a number of reasons to make use of patrol bases. These reasons include to avoid detection by eliminating movement, to hide a unit during a long, detailed reconnaissance, to perform maintenance on weapons, equipment, eat and rest, to plan and issue orders, to organize after infiltrating an enemy area, and to establish a base from which to execute several consecutive or concurrent operations. Unlike the campsites we talked about last lesson, the patrol base has some very specific characteristics. The leader selects the tentative site from a map or by aerial reconnaissance. It needs to be easily defendable for short periods of time, away from natural lines of drift, away from high-speed avenues of approach. It needs to provide cover and concealment from both ground and air, and provide little or no tactical advantage to the enemy. Now let's think a little bit more about these patrol base characteristics. Drift is a tough thing to kind of explain over the internet. but the way to remember it is that if you've ever been out in the woods and you've just taken a look at a piece of, of dirt or some trees, you can see an easy way to make your way through the woods. These we call natural lines of drift. If someone was just moving through the woods, would they accidentally stumble upon us simply by taking the path of least resistance walking around the woods? We call this natural line of drift. The next thing we'd like to ensure is that our patrol base is away from high-speed avenues of approach. The reason you want to stay away from high-speed avenues of approach is that roads and trails exist someplace for a reason. They're trafficked by potentially anybody, civilians, enemy. Now we can't risk that the patrol is compromised simply by somebody driving down the street or walking down a trail. So keep away from those high-speed avenues of approach. Now the patrol base needs to provide cover and concealment from both air and ground. We can't allow someone to accidentally, if they are looking just in our general direction, not walking, not using a natural line of drift, that they happen to just look in our direction. If someone was to look at your patrol base, would they be able to see it? This applies to both ground and air. Increasingly, small quad drones are being used by the enemy. So if a quad drone was flying around in our area, would they be able to look down on our patrol base and easily find us? When we say the patrol base provides little or no tactical advantage to the enemy, what we mean is that is ground that is good for us, but that the enemy would not consider important. Something that the enemy doesn't think about or is not interested in makes a great place for us to park our patrol base. Planning considerations. Observation post and communication with observation posts. Patrol or platoon fire plan. Alert plan. Withdrawal plan from the PB, including withdrawal routes and a rally point, rendezvous point, or alternate PB. Security system to ensure the specific troops are awake at all times. Enforcement of camouflage, noise, and light discipline. The conduct of required activities with minimum movement and noise priorities of work. Observation posts are used to secure the patrol base. They are detachments of two or three soldiers placed on the outside of the patrol base to act as an early warning system against enemy reconnaissance or enemy attacks against the patrol base. It's important that you have a good communications with them. Your patrol or platoon fire plan 
is the means by which you ensure that your platoon inside of its patrol base can defend itself. These are systems of engaging the enemy, what weapon systems you're going to use, and how you alert those people to fire. It's a very important part of maintaining security in the patrol base that if it comes time to fight, that you actually can fight. Next we'll talk about alert plan. The alert plan is the means by which we get the entire patrol inside the patrol base up to 100% security. That is, they're behind their weapons and they're ready to fight. Ordinarily inside a patrol base, there are priorities of work, which we'll talk about in just a second. So it's, it's not true to say that the patrol base is always everybody is down pulling security, that, that their eyes are steely-eyed killers, etc., etc. Sometimes there are other things to do. Eat, sleep, communicate, conduct weapons maintenance, conduct water resupply, and all the other priorities of work. If we need the platoon back to 100% security though, and this could be at any time of the day, you're going to need a good alert plan. On the subject of alert plan, we should probably talk about withdrawal plan. The withdrawal plan is the means by which we get out of the patrol base. The patrol base has been compromised. We're under fire. We're facing overwhelming enemy assault. We need an ability to get out of Dodge as quick as possible. We call that the withdrawal plan. You may have heard the terms black and gold. These are the two colors of the Ranger tab, and they are code words used to displace from the patrol base. For instance, if you get the code word black, 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 we might have already talked about that we will move 600 meters to the south of the patrol base to a large hill, and all of us will defend it. Everyone will know that black, black, black means to go to that hill to defend it. At the same time, if we say something like gold, 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 gold might mean go east for 600 meters and set up on the south side of the draw that we all know about because I showed you on your map. That's a good example of a withdrawal plan. Every soldier needs to know the withdrawal plan and it's an important planning consideration while we're conducting operations in the field. Next, let's talk about security. The thing to remember about patrol bases is that though they are our area to operate in, they're not secure. They're in the enemy's backyard. So we have to make sure that at all times we're prepared to fight. But that can be taxing. Soldiers have to sleep, eat, have all these other things they have to do. So we need to instead, instead install a security system. Security system, typically expressed in percentages, is the number of troops within our patrol base that are awake, alert, and are on the line prepared to fight. The minimum security that we will use in the patrol base is 33%. That is 33% of available manpower with all machine guns contributed in the platoon up. We will never leave a machine gun without, without it manned. Now a platoon has two medium machine guns and six light machine guns in the M249 squad automatic weapon, which means at a minimum eight people will be up at any given time on the behind those machine guns ready to fight if the enemy stumbles upon us. We can increase the security posture to 50% or 100% considering to MET TT dependent. And don't I didn't say MET TC. I do mean enemy, terrain, etc., etc., the things that we talk about when we mean MET TC. The next thing we want to plan for is the enforcement of camouflage, noise, and light discipline. We don't come from the woods, cadets, so we have to blend in. We have to wear uniforms like this. We have to paint our face with camouflage. We want to make sure we blend in our surroundings. The unfortunate part about that is that camouflage paint comes off of our skin. The little twigs and branches and things that we put in our equipment will eventually break off and deteriorate. So part of your planning considerations is a means to make sure that you can constantly reattach that camouflage, that you can reapply camouflage paint to your soldiers, to your soldiers' faces and skins. It's a neglected part of patrolling principle that we have to do these things. Next we'll talk about noise and light discipline. We want to ensure that we're being as quiet as possible. Remember, if we can do SEALs, the enemy can do SEALs. So if the enemy is not 100% sure where we are, but they have an idea that we're in the vicinity, what they can do is move around our area and listen. They look. Did someone accidentally set a flashlight off at night? Someone talking too loud? Someone maybe smoking a cigarette behind a tree and they shouldn't be? It's the job of the leader to plan and enforce camouflage, noise, and light discipline. On that note, we also want to plan for the ability to conduct operations with the minimum movement and noise necessary. 
This is such an important planning factor that we've made it the seventh planning factor we have here. We want to make sure that everything we do, not just noise and light discipline, that everything we do involves the minimum amount of movement and noise. This can be conducting rehearsals, moving troops around, water resupply, anything that will raise a soldier up above the prone position and let them move around the woods in a way that would reveal our position. We want to plan for that. Now, in the field, there can be any number of things that happens, contingencies that happen, where you may need to have soldiers moving around the patrol base. I can think of a, a number of reasons off the top of my head. What you want to make sure you do is that there is no unnecessary movement unless we absolutely have to have it. Our eighth planning consideration is priorities of work, which we'll talk about, again, more in a second. Priorities of work must be planned for. We can't assume that they're just going to happen by themselves. They are deeply important and vital, and it would be a mistake for a leader to ignore preparing adequate time to ensure that they're all done. Next, let's talk about patrol base occupation. I've got my whiteboard here, and let's say we will start our patrol base from down here in our security halt. Remember, the security halt is the place that we start prior to occupation of operation. Remember last time we talked about a 360 degree security, everyone's looking out. Looks like a spider kind of, huh? And let's say that our tentative patrol base somewhere, let's say our tentative, that looks terrible, huh? Our tentative patrol base is somewhere up here. What we would do is we would leave on a leader's reconnaissance. A leader's recon is a small detachment from the main body of leaders and key personnel who go out to an objective, who go out to a patrol base and actually examine the grounds to make sure it is what it needs to be. You're going to take with you nine people on the leader's recon for the patrol base. First person you're going to want to take with you is the platoon leader. Next, you'll want to take the platoon's radio telephone operator. You'll want to take the weapon squad leader. You'll want to take two ammunition bearers from the machine guns. Next, you will want to take a small detachment for security, a team leader, a grenadier, a rifleman, and an automatic rifleman. I almost forgot that last one there. Those are the nine you'll want to take with you. PL, RTO, weapon squad leader, AB1, AB2, team leader, rifleman, grenadier, automatic rifleman. What you'll want to do is you'll depart from our patrol base, from, excuse me, from our security halt down here, and they will be counted out. Before they go, they will give their five-point security plan, their GATWA, which we covered last time. They will travel to the tentative patrol base site, stop, do their seals, stop, look, listen, and smell, and then they will clear this area that they believe to be the patrol base. How will they clear it? There are any number of ways which they can clear it. And because this is really squad focused, this, this MS-1 leader, the thing you want to remember is that they'll just kind of get online and walk through the area. They'll establish this triangular shape patrol base. We'll get a closer look at it right now. So the patrol base is triangular in shape. It has apexes. We'll call this the 2 o'clock. We'll call this guy here the 10 o'clock and the 6 o'clock. We'll close them with circles here, too, to make sure. So if we do the paint, we have a nice clean line. Okay. As clean of a line as Sergeant Andrews can possibly make. We'll go in here and we'll clear this area. We'll put an AB up here at the 2 o'clock. That AB, that ammunition bearer AB, all right, who helps the machine gunners out, he's equipped with a rifle. At the 2 o'clock we'll put another AB, also pulling security. Now it's important to understand that these techniques, these are strictly techniques. In the Ranger Handbook dated April 2017, it tells you, it tells you to maintain security. It tells you this is the means by which it oc occupy. It does not specify these people. In fact, because Ranger platoons actually have three machine guns, this leader's reconnaissance of our nine people, which I've just mentioned, is just a little bit different. So at the 6 o'clock, we're also going to install an M249, squad automatic weapon, and we're going to leave our weapon squad leader, or weasel. 
So we're going to leave four people at the patrol base once it's been secured. But wait, there's more. To deceive the enemy and to make sure that they haven't followed us in the patrol base, we're going to take two more soldiers and we're going to make a observation post. This is sometimes known as a dog leg. Because while we, while we traveled into the patrol base, maybe this way, maybe this way, what we're going to do when our troops are coming, we'll do a different color, axis of advance, we'll do a green. When our soldiers are coming from their security hall, they will actually travel at a 90 degree and turn in. So it's important that we leave some soldiers down here to secure us, but also kind of guide them in. What is the distance between the between the um, observation post and the six o'clock position here, it doesn't say. 100 meters isn't bad, but in certain terrain, that, that just might be too much. So what we'll do is we'll leave down here. Why don't we leave a team leader, someone we trust, and let's leave him with a rifleman. So going back, as they leave on their leader's recon, going back to the security halt is the, you can't see that. Going back to the security halt is the PL, the RTO, and at this point, because we have left one, two, three, four, five, six, all that he will have left is a grenadier. That way, everyone stays security, everyone has a partner somewhere in the patrol base, and that platoon leader comes back, grabs the rest of the platoon in the security hall, and leads them to the patrol base. So when the platoon leader comes back, they will use this dog leg, as like we showed before. They will travel down here. They will make contact with that team leader. They'll say, hey, you know, we're, we're coming in. He'll say, okay, make a left. And this is where it gets interesting. Now, the squads will move out of time. First squad, second squad, third squad. They'll move to their designated security position. So they might say something, first squad is 10 to 2. Second squad is 10 to 6. Third squad is 6 to 2. And what will happen is as these... As these units enter the patrol base, let's say this is first squad, and in this instance, first squad is 10 to 2. They will travel down here, they will make a left, and they will halt here. And this entire zone here will be first squad. Now let's say second squad is 2 to 6, and we'll make second squad orange. Second squad will travel in here. 6 to 2, 2 to 6, however you want to call it. And then this zone here will become second squad zone. Again, in between these apexes. Third squad, instead of making some crazy maneuver around, let's say third squad's blue, instead of making a right hand, they'll make a left hand, will travel down here, and this will become third squad zone. In the center will be the platoon's headquarters. As such, the headquarters being the PL, the platoon sergeant, the RTO, the forward observer, the medic, anybody other attachments that is part of the platoon. And that is the occupation of a patrol base. Now, once we're in our patrol base, again, let's draw it out here. We'll need to secure and do a, a quick reconnaissance on the outside of the patrol base. There are a number of ways to do this. I'm going to show you a, a couple of methods I like. One is the T method, where we send small detachments of two or three soldiers out from the center of the perimeter and they search around the outside of the patrol base to make sure there are not any factors which might eliminate it. So let's say um, we set our patrol base up, we, we think this is just the greatest thing ever and then I send a reconnaissance detachment out and they find, oh my god, there's a, a bridge, there's a road right in front of us. Boss, we gotta get out of here, this is a terrible place. We're still secure, we're just as secure as we needed to be for like a security halt, but it's time to leave. It's unfortunate that we will have done all of this work to set up a patrol base only to have it burned. It does happen, happens all the time, it will probably happen to you. But it would be better for us to know these things about the patrol base than to completely set in, to start taking machine guns apart, opening MREs, having people relax and, and try and get some rest, only to find out that mm, there's a village, uh, there's a river, uh, there's all these things that, we, that would eliminate us from having here. Once we are established, we've put our soldiers where we need to do, and we've done a preliminary check around the patrol base for security, the patrol base is established. Next, let's talk about priorities of work. 
Once the platoon leader is briefed by the RNS teams and determines the area is suitable for a patrol base, the leader establishes or modifies defensive work priorities in order to establish the defense of the patrol base. Priorities of work are not a laundry list of tasks to be completed. To be effective, priorities of work consist of tasks, given time, and a measurable performance standard. These are all very important. As it says there, when you're doing these priorities of work, as the leader, you have a responsibility and you have the authority to change the speed of how priorities of work are done. Now, according to TC 21-76, the Ranger Handbook, as it just the reading had just said, it said that that is not a it uses a task and conditions as it says you know okay clean your weapons you have 30 minutes to do it once you're done report back to me that is certainly an option that a platoon leader has another option that a platoon leader has is to give general guidance first squad second squad third squad these are the things that i want done these are the orders that i want them done in but we will not stop priorities start priorities of work until all of the machine guns are clean or all weapons maintenance are done the leader has a tremendous amount of latitude and ultimately responsible to conduct these priorities of work. Like it says in the Ranger Handbook, the leader is responsible for everything the patrol does or fails to do. So what are these priorities of work? As you can see here, our priorities of work are varied. They are security, a withdrawal plan, communications, mission planning, maintenance, water resupply, and meal plan. Security is, without a doubt, the most important priority of work. It's the first priority of work that we always want to turn our attention to. We mentioned before that security is expressed in the matter of percentages. 100% security, 50% security, 33% security. It's the leader's job to ensure that adequate security, given the enemy, given the terrain, given the mission at hand, under the Met TC, right? Under the Met TC, is adequately being seen to. First and foremost, if you only do one thing, do security first. So let's talk about withdrawal. We had mentioned previously the black and gold plan. Again, that is not doctrinal, that's just a idea. You I've used and have been in units that used alternate code words, used different plans. But the idea of black and gold or withdrawal plan is that the leader has established a ironclad plan that everybody in the patrol knows that if we got to get out of Dodge, black means this, gold means this. You can use any code word you want. If you want to use uh, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, and Luke means we run to the desert, and Han means we get on helicopters and fly away, I don't care. But you do have to have a withdrawal. Next, let's talk communications. The communications priority of work ensures that you are maintaining constant communications with next higher headquarters. Your patrol, remember, is a detachment. And if the patrol is not able to talk to the unit it is detached from, this could be a problem. What if your patrol is compromised? What if you come under fire? What if you have casualties and you need to evacuate them? It's the important job and ultimately the responsibility of the platoon leader to ensure that communications is being made. This means we use radio checks. Radio checks are hourly or semi-hourly or half-hourly, however they have been established, they are checks to ensure that we can indeed talk to higher headquarters. Your RTO or someone manning the radio picks up the old radio, has a conversation on the phone with them about it, and makes sure that they can talk to next higher headquarters. Our next priority of work is mission planning. Mission planning are all of the things that we do to plan for the next fall one missions. Remember, we're in the enemy's backyard for a reason. Why are we there? And what are we going to do while we're there? The patrol base is an excellent place to conduct mission planning. So that is our fourth priority of work. Our fifth priority of work is maintenance. This is a tough subject. It is difficult to do maintenance in the field because the field is a dirty, gross place that wears down our equipment. Weapons, machinery, radios, vehicles, they don't stand the test of time. They're machines just like anything else and they need to be clean, lubricated, ensure that their batteries work and that they're in good functioning order if we're going to take the fight to the enemy. We need to set aside dedicated resources and space to clean these weapon systems and to conduct essential maintenance on these equipment that we carry into battle. During that time, the machine guns cannot be compromised. Since the machine guns do most of the fighting, most of the shooting for us, we have to make sure that the machine guns are always ready to go. If a platoon has two machine guns, 
when we're cleaning the machine guns, everybody else needs to be up at 100% security. Again, security and maintenance working together because maintenance is a vulnerability. If one machine gun is being cleaned, we stop. Everybody maintains security. Machine gun one is cleaned. It is reassembled. Everyone is still up at 100% security. Then we move on to gun two. Gun two is disassembled. It's cleaned. It's put back together. It goes back on the line. Then the squad leaders can make decisions on which machine guns to clean. The, the memory, we have two four nines, we have rifles, we have machine guns, uh, we have grenade launchers, we have, we have all this stuff that goes boom, boom, boom. The point is, is that the things that do the most amount of killing, we cannot allow ourselves to be vulnerable for cleaning them. So part of the security plan and part of the maintenance plan has to work together. I will tell you, just as a, again, not doctrinal, just a just tip, one of the things you can do is to take uh, your machine guns, when you've occupied your position, you've done your leader's reconnaissance, you've done all those kinds of things, one of the first things you should do as a platoon leader, and before you establish your priorities of work, is clean those machine guns. Because once the machine guns are clean, then we can have a little bit more freedom of maneuver to plan, to eat, to sleep, to conduct water resupply. Which water resupply is used to resupply the water of your patrol. It consists of sending troops outside of the patrol base to a place to resupply water. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be streams or rivers or anything like that. It could be a secret cache of water that the supply sergeant has dropped off. It could be sending troops back to a forward logistic area to grab water and then bring it back. It, it, the idea you're going to go out and fill water in, in a, a canteen out of river water, that does happen, and, and, and there are historical examples where that has happened. But for the most part today... It is consist of going back to an area that we may have just come from that is more secure, grabbing water and bringing back out to a patrol base. Next, let's talk about our meal plan. So meal plan is an interesting priority of work because it actually, in the Ranger Handbook, dated April 2017, TC 21-76, it lumps meal time together as really kind of personal time. And by personal time, I mean you're going to kick your feet up and play Xbox or something like that. It's time to take care of your troops' personal needs. Eat personal hygiene, and that thing that everybody loves, rest. So that meal plan covers all those things. The problem with when we look at these priorities at work, again, we've gone through all these different things. Yes, there are, there are, we don't have to do them all in order, but clearly security is more important than sleep. Communications is more important than sleep. We talked about all these things that happen. The point is that your soldiers will be exhausted. You will be exhausted when you get in the patrol base, and the, it'll be difficult. You're going to have to fight this instinct to not take your boots off, eat chow, compromise all the other things. And say, hey, call the hire, right, while I'm eating an MRE, or try and do things concurrently. That's why it's the responsibility of the leader to keep a strict control on these priorities of work because people's nature will take over. They're tired. They're hungry. They want to eat chow, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to eat chow. They're going to take a nap. They're going to do the things that they think they need to do to survive. And it's your job as a leader to enforce that missions first, soldiers always, mission first though. These seven priority works are absolutely essential for operating in the field. Without them, we cannot get our jobs done while we're working in the enemy's backyard. So ensure that you know what all of them are and you have an idea on how to conduct them. The last thing we'll talk about is objective rally points. Objective rally points are the last safe space that we have before we launch our attack on the enemy. They're the place where we stash equipment, conduct final leaders reconnaissance, fun, conduct final inspections before we go into the fight. They are occupied in a similar way as a patrol base, but let's take a quick look at definitionally what are they. An objective rally point lies 200 to 400 meters from the objective, or at a minimum one major terrain feature away. They are reconnoitered, and occupied in an identical manner to patrol base. It's important to know that in an objective rally point, they're not used for the same reason that a patrol base is. We don't do priorities of work in them. We don't sleep in them. We try not to eat in them. We definitely don't do maintenance inside them. Let's take a look at some of the rules that we don't want to break when we're occupying an objective rally point. At the objective rally point, we want to conduct seals and pinpoint our location. This means that we ensure that we're in the right place and we stop, look, listen, and smell. We want to conduct a leader's recon from the ORP. That is completely allowed. If a fragmentary order, that is a change in the game plan that we have found since doing a leader's recon, that is allowed in the ORP. We can make final preparations inside the ORP. 
We can stash our equipment. We can draw kits. We can camouflage our soldiers. We can get any of the things we need for the objective in the objective rally point. We can take accountability of troops and equipment either going to the mission or coming back off of it. And last but not least, we can disseminate information about the objective or anything that the soldiers are likely to encounter during this operation. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson today. We've gone over a lot over the last two lectures. We've talked about halts, which are the things we do when our soldiers have stopped moving. We've talked about patrol bases, which is the places we go to in between operations when we're in the enemy's backyard. And we've talked about objective rally points, something like a little mini base that we use before we bring the final assault on the enemy. Our learning objectives this week have been these four items. We can understand the purposes of halts and their types. We understand the purpose of patrol base and objective rally points. We can describe patrol base establishment and we can describe the patrol base activities. This patrol base stuff can be tough and I don't by any means expect you to be an expert. Because of coronavirus we haven't even had an opportunity to practice it. But these very basic principles that we've outlined this week in this lecture and the previous lecture will serve you well in the coming years as you become evaluated as a patroller. Thanks as always and if you need anything don't be afraid to drop me a line through Gmail or through the Elms communication system. I'll see you at lab tonight. Don't forget to do your discussion board and have a great day. <laughs>